What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over floating player names and nicknames in your game. So specifically, we're going over how they do it in platform fighters and Super Smash Bros. style. Of course, it's in that series. But let me exactly show you how this works. So I have four text boxes set up, and we can put in whatever names we want. Put in Sean, Joe, Tom, and Zach. Now, um, each of these, of course, right now we're only one player, but we are going to have multiplayer menu support, so they're all going to be able to pick their own players, and when we do, or their own characters, and when they do, then those names will be assigned to them. So we're going to continue, we're going to choose our map, and then we will have our names floating above our head. Specifically in this case, I just put um, our names here in different colors. You can, of course, assign these colors to teams or force them to be a certain color, something like that. You can even add an image to the widget we're going to make, like a little arrow. Uh, I believe that's how Smash does it, so it's not just the floating text, but it looks like it's text pointing to the specific character. Things like that. So you can make it a little bit fancier than this, but this is the general idea. First things first, we're not going to be doing anything on the code today, but I do want to show you something. So in my base game instance, and I can see that this is a little bit bigger than the window I'm recording. There we go. Something like that. Um, if you've been following the series, you'll have this F player detail structure that has the player name in it, and we weren't doing anything with it in the character select screen, and that's going to change today. So if you'd like to catch up on the series, I'll go ahead and leave the first episode right here to show you everything we've done. I believe this is episode 16. So we're relatively far along. And then if you don't want to catch up on the whole series, but you do want to catch up on the F player details area and where we were setting up all the data for our characters, I'll go ahead and leave the first character select screen video right here. Okay. So just know this player name will be used today it's from our base game instance that way it can persist between levels and things like that we can actually write it out and then save it for you know other uses or, or next time you log in or something like that for now we're just going to use it to put the name over our head but it's going to become more involved than that later on let's go into our character select screen widget in this case i'm just going to add four text boxes I removed the fifth option for character select, not because we're going to disable a fifth character, we're going to have up to eight players, but I did want to disable it from this menu because it looked awkward having five. We'll have to make a separate menu for eight, just like Super Smash does, just because it doesn't really fit as nicely otherwise. Anyway, you can go into search palette and type text box. You can just do the, the regular. You don't need the multi-line. I mean, you can use it if you want them to write this huge name. We're not going to cap how long the name could be in this episode. So, And then you can see I put four here. One, two, three, four. I just called them P1, P2, P3, P4, name text box. Okay. Now, in the text box itself, you have this content text field where you could actually put text that will be in there by default. Like if I put name, name will show up now. But if we do this... Um, and someone doesn't pick their their name, then it'll always say name above their head unless you force it to a different value, which you easily could do. You would just check for the string that you put in as the default value. If that string is the, the player name in the game instance for that player, then go ahead and reset it to something else. You could do that. I think it's easier just to leave it blank, quite frankly, but... If you, if you want some sort of default, feel free to type something in here. The way we're doing it, it will actually say default if you leave it alone. Like for example, if I pick my character and I say Sean, and then I go enter and I maybe change that. And then I go in and I pick my map. I'm Sean, everyone else is default. Again, you might want to get rid of that. You might not want that being displayed, but for now it's okay we can always make those decisions later as well. We just need to get the text showing above the head for when we do want it. So you don't have to change anything in particular on these text boxes. They have a lot of options, more than uh, most other widgets. So feel free to take a look at all this stuff. You can make it look really nice just by using the default options they have. 
but on all of them, make sure you go to on text committed or you can use on text changed if you want. So the difference is on text changed is anytime text changes for this text box. So as I type things, if I'm on text change, then every time I'm typing something, like there we go, on text change fired, fired again, fired again, fired again, fired again, and all those times. On text committed is when I press enter or click off the text box, whatever solidifies what I've been typing and makes it that the the answer. Now I can always go back and and do it again and commit again. But commit just means that, you know, we've exited the text box and we've basically forced that to be the text in there when we leave. So I'm leaving it as on text committed because of course it won't be enter in the final game, we'll be using gamepads. But I'll probably have the players enter their names and then press A or start or something and that will commit the text. So I'm gonna do everything on on text committed. Feel free to do it on text changed if you'd like. But make sure you have at least one of these two events for all of the text boxes. Okay. Now go into your graph. These will already be made if you just did this. And we'll go over what we need to do. So since we're in our character select screen widget, we already have the base game instance reference in here because we were using that to set our character classes, the number of players we had, and our character skin. Well, all we need to do this time is get the corresponding player. Now the text boxes have a very specific order, right? One, two, three, and four. So we can flat out just look for the, the right index of the player when we commit that text box and then set the player details. So the way it works is your on text committed will have text and commit method. We don't need commit method. Um, it's not going to matter for now. It might matter later on. But for now, drag off your text. This is what's in the text box. So quite simply, you're going to use that to go into your player name on your player details. Get your game instance reference. Get the player's array. And then get index, the proper index. Player index zero in the player's array is player one. Player index one in the player's array is player two. Index two is player three. And index three is player four. And all we do is drag off of this. By the way, when you're getting, uh, when you're calling git, you should use a reference when possible here. It will be a little bit faster and we can go ahead and change that. There's no reason for us to get a copy in this case. Then drag off your reference. You know it's a reference because it's a little diamond. And call set members in player details right here. Um, now when you call this, it's going to look like this. And you're not going to have the player name value. What you have to do is on the details panel on the right here, you click what you want as a pin. You can go ahead and click them all. It honestly won't hurt anything. But if you do that, you have to pass all the data along. Otherwise, it's going to reset to what's in these boxes. So your skin and your character class would get removed and set to default, which we don't want. And so instead of doing extra work and getting those, just go ahead and have player name selected and pass your text in. It will automatically do a conversion for you and add this little shape. And there you go. You do that for all four text boxes, or if you're doing all eight right now, or however many you want, go ahead and add it for all of them. And now your text will be set uh, for your player details array and structure so you'll be good in your players are right here and that means that that data can get passed to the game so the next thing we do is we have to go into our character and actually add this widget to it and first of course we have to make the widget so go into your main area wherever you want to make your widget right click and hit user interface widget blueprint when you make it it'll be empty like this all we're gonna do is add text, literally text, not a text box or anything, text. Add it to the screen. Once that is added, then we can go ahead and add our widget if we want, but I'm just gonna show you everything I've done here because I'm not doing a lot. If you did wanna add the little arrow like I was talking about earlier or some sort of image or change the font, you can A, change the font by just clicking on the text and going through the options here. Next, if you want to add an image, this whole widget is going to be displayed in screen space. So anything you add onto this widget will come with the character. So you could just add an image right below the player name and get it to show up. Okay.
go into our graph real quick. We have two things in here. We have a set player name and a set text color. So for now, I've just forced the text that we added to be player name, which of course we don't want that as our default. So we have to have a way to set our text to the proper value. So I just made two custom events in this widget called my widget floating player name. All you have to do is right click and add custom event two times over. One will be for set player name. One will be for set text color. If you'd like to do that for me, I'm just making set text color to where I assign zero to a certain color, one to a certain color, two to a certain color and three to a certain color. But you can obviously make it a little bit more complicated than that. But now that we have these events made, go ahead and click on your set player name event and add an input parameter, player name, which is just a text variable that I've called player name. Go ahead and grab your player name text, which is our text here. So make sure you click, you check is variable. That way you can access it in the graph. So get player name text and then call it set text. So I know that can be a little bit confusing, especially because it says set text text. But what's going on here, this is the text on our widget right here in design view. And then set text is setting the value of that text. So I know there's a lot of text here. There's text, set text, text, target is text, in text. <laughs> so that doesn't, you know, that's not all that informative. But essentially, you're just setting the text of our text widget there. And then we can use our player name and just drag right into it. We're going to call this in our character and send over the appropriate name. So you don't have to know what the name is now or anything. Just set it up like this and we'll call it in a few minutes. Then the other thing I just made set text color. The way you set this up might be different than me. Again, you might set it up where they can pick their own color or it's designed to work with teams and things like that. We will get into team combat down the line. So we'll do that sort of thing. But if you want to do it now, feel free to play around with it. For me, I'm just literally grabbing the player index. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And I'm going to set the color based on that. Regardless, the import, important point here is add your parameters that you need for your custom event that you're going to pass into it. Do the logic you want to do. I use the switch. And then I go ahead and grab my player name text again and just drag off of it and call something called set color and opacity and then you can actually double click on the color that's shown it'll bring up the color picker and then you go ahead and choose the color you want you can mess with all these things make it look different okay so there you go for the record uh, I left default on it doesn't do anything Technically, it will leave the text white, which I actually thought was kind of cool. So it could be, you know, you have all these colors. If for whatever reason we run into an issue in the default fires, then you'll still have white text. So it's not like the text isn't going to be displayed. It just will be a different color. And that'll be an indicator that we have an issue perhaps in this function. Okay, the last thing we need to do is actually call these events in the proper spot. So you can call them wherever you want. I think the best spot to call it is in the characters themselves, simply because um, we are going to add the widget as a component to our character. Now, heads up, um, adding widgets to your character like this is sometimes a little bit funky, a little bit janky. So it can just flat out not show up sometimes. Um, it won't happen in package builds or anything like that. So it's not like if it's not showing up, oh no, you know, it's not a reliable method. But when you're working in editor, it doesn't always work as intended. So sometimes you need to close your editor and reopen it. Um, if that doesn't work, what I like to do is actually go into my design view, delete my component that's not showing up, and then just undo it. So like delete, whoops, delete, compile, and then undo, compile, save. And I know that's like not optimal, but Unreal sometimes has this issue where it won't show up in the game, in your editor. So sometimes you have to kind of play around with it, then it'll come back. Anyway, what we have to do is add component, and we're going to search for component widget right here. Now, you can put any widget in that you want. So call it whatever you want once you put it in. I called mine floating player name, just like the widget. So here, to make things less confusing, let's call it floating player name ref. So it's a reference. 
Okay, now in here, the user interface options are your most important. Essentially, we can determine where it's displayed to the world or screen, the size, if we want to draw it at a specific size, and where we want to place it. You can do world or screen. However, if you do world, it's going to show up here, which is good. And then when you realize you can come to the back side and it will not be flipped. Now we can simply switch the rotation around when our character is facing the other way. And you can see that that would work. So I'm not going to sit here and say that we shouldn't do world. However, um, if you're okay with not being able to see it during this setup here, then you can go ahead and make it screen. And th all this stuff will actually work for you right off the bat. You just have to make it screen and you'll have to make some adjustments on the go because again, you won't be able to see it in this viewport. At least no way that I know of to make it show up. Then you go ahead and pick your widget class. So you can pick any widget you want. Of course, we want our floating player name. For the draw size, I leave it 500 by 500 because I'm going to check draw at desired size. It does give you a warning saying that it is very expensive to do this if you're doing it every frame, and we are in fact doing it every frame. Now, we may go ahead and change this down the line because you can manually redraw um, and redraw with a certain time. So like it'll redraw every second or so, and maybe we should do that instead of drawing uh, every frame. But for now, I'm gonna leave it like this, quite frankly, just because it's going to look the best and it's good to for me. I always like to do it however I can get it working first and then go back and fix it as needed. So I'm letting you know this is not the best, the most efficient way to do it. I think it'll be perfectly fine. I've had things like this in games before and it hasn't caused any issues, but just be aware of it. If you're having some slowdowns, it could be something as simple as this drawing every frame, okay? All right, and then the pivot is where it's gonna be placed relative to its default position. Since we're at the screen, we want it to be displaced on the character to the screen. So you, it's kind of hard to determine where you wanna place it. For me, this is what I found was good. I think uh, even 2.5, it looks a little high to me since I don't have an image. But I believe it's 0.5 and 0.5 by default. So go ahead and just play around with it. I went ahead and moved it a little bit to the left and up a lot. You don't have to change anything else in here. Just a quick note, if you are doing uh, the world method, make sure you do make it is two-sided in the rendering here. So if you're not using screen space, make sure you make it is two-sided. That's what forces it to be that uh, black color. Let me show you. So remember we were showing you this. Well, if you were to uncheck this, it's actually not checked by default. It's completely transparent from the other direction. You do wanna make it is two-sided, but then we will go ahead and, and rotate it. If you're rotating it as soon as the character rotates, you know, like we probably will be, you don't need it to be two-sided. It'll work without it. But that's just to kind of make it so it's never invisible. And you can see even now the widget's being a little weird. Like it's gone. It's just flat out gone. So there we go. So it's a little weird with the way it works. I'm going to uncheck it because I don't need it, but I wanted to show you guys that. I'm going to keep mine on screen. Okay, I'm gonna compile and save. And you don't have to change anything else here, but feel free to look at the options in case you want to. Okay, so make sure that you do that for all your characters, all your players, you're gonna to have to add that widget. If all your blueprint characters are children of uh, a default blueprint character, which would be a good idea, then you only have to add it to the one character. Since these two characters, they're both mannequins and I've essentially just duplicated them to show you different functionality, I did not do that. So I had to add it to both, but future characters that I add will be children of this class almost definitely. So I'll only have to add it to this class and it'll work for everybody. But just a heads up, doesn't matter how you're doing it, just make sure you add it to whoever. Also you can see I called it floating nickname here, which was on purpose. I just called it that because I said why not. So now the last thing we got to do is go into our event graph and perform the logic that we want to, to get it to spawn on the screen and display the way we want it to. First things first, we're going to need a base game instance reference here. So we actually had one in the past and determined we didn't need it and just use the game mode instead. 
However, in this case, the character is going to need both the game instance and the game mode. Of course, there's other ways to do this. You can just pass the data along to your character, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this. To be honest, the character will probably want the game instance to save data down the line, and we'll get into that more later. But for now, in our set character references, this is essentially when we start giving control to our characters. It's not quite construct, just to make things a little bit cleaner. That way we know all the characters have already spawned. We go ahead and get game instance, quite literally. And then we cast it to our game instance, which is base game instance. Then we drag off of that and hit promote to variable and call it game instance reference. Okay, so now we have a game instance reference variable. All this stuff was stuff we did in the past. We get our game mode, we loop through our players and we set our references. This is simply so we can use keyboard mode. So if you're following this tutorial and you don't need to use multiple players on one keyboard, then you can go ahead and ignore all this logic. This was stuff we set up in the past for that. But if you have, regardless, just go past this logic. Even the default case should go past this logic. And this is what we have to add to make the floating player names show up properly. Grab your game instance reference. Feel free to check if it's valid or not before using it, but it should be okay since at this point, if our game instance isn't valid, we would have other issues. Go ahead and grab your player's array from it. Okay, there we go. Grab players. Okay, and then we call get on this. Remember, we want to do the reference. We don't need a copy in this case. Get our player uh, player number, excuse me, which is again, something we're using for keyboard mode, essentially what player we are. This will get the proper index because we're grabbing the player number of this character blueprint. So whatever one this is, which has been assigned earlier, then we'll get this appropriate name. So we'll go ahead and type break, break player details. And then you have your player name. So our player name is gonna be used later. You can see this matches what's right above. So I'm gonna delete this now. That's how you get all that stuff. Now, we need to do something do some logic to get our widget component that's been added here, floating player name ref. You can either type in this when you're searching or just drag it on to the screen like this. And this is your widget component. We need to get the actual widget from it. So the way you do that is get user widget object. Then you drag off of this and cast it to the appropriate object. So now we can cast it to our floating player name widget. Then we can call functions by dragging off of this guy. So we want to call set player name, okay? And we want to call set text color. Remember, these are the two that we made in that widget right here. We have set text color, set player name right there. All right, now we just bring everything together. So this logic that we have here, we grab the player name because the player name is going to go into the set player name function or the player name parameter. Simple enough. And then we also want to call set text color, which I'm just passing in the player number since I'm using player index to determine color. All right. Make sure you do that for all characters that aren't children of this blueprint, if you have any. For example, again, this one is not, so I went ahead and added it. And now when you play your game, you can pick your character. You can go ahead and type something in. Call mine Sean the Bro. Change my color if I want. And go ahead and continue. Put that on the level. And there we go. Sean the Bro and everyone else is default. And of course, everything else works as intended. I can still go attack people. Doesn't change anything with the actual logic. Just puts the name over your head and floating. And since it's in screen space, it doesn't have to actually rotate the text. If you put it in world space, just make sure you rotate the text with your character's rotation. Since we can only face two directions, uh, it should work perfectly fine. All right, but there you go, guys. That's how you can get some floating name text to appear in your platform fighter or your Super Smash Brothers game. I hope this helped you, and thank you so much for watching. If it did, please subscribe does more for me than anything else you can do for the channel, and I just really appreciate it. 
want to give a huge shout out to all my YouTube membership supporters and my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for believing in me and helping me continue my my end goal of teaching people how to make games. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. If you had any issues with this episode or any of the tutorials in this series or any of my videos, feel free to join the Discord. I can't leave an iCard, but it is in the description. Feel free to go check it out and we'll be able to help you with any of the issues you had. Lastly, guys, if you want to come support us on Twitch, we've been playing some Demon Souls and Man of Medan, which is going to be going to Little Hope this Friday. So, it's been a packed schedule, but thank you for all who have been coming over from YouTube to the Twitch and saying thank you and everything. I really appreciate it. It's really kind. So, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.